An area high school football team makes history. Highlights and reaction from Central Catholic's fourth consecutive state championship. Crowds pack the Tippecanoe Mall bright and early this Black Friday. Hear from the people who brave the cold and wind to get a break at the registers. Now the cold wintry weather settling in. 27 right now. We've got the complete chilly weekend forecast coming up. News 18 at 11 starts now. WLFI Lafayette. News from where you live. Good evening, I'm Brittany Tyner. Thanks for joining us. Dan Klein has the night off. Those stories in a moment, but first, emergency crews are dispatched to a home in Carroll County after a chimney catches fire. The Delphi Police Department says the call came in around 7 this evening. Dispatchers say the fire at 6183 West Towpath Road in Delphi started in the chimney. The Idaville Volunteer Fire Department responded to the call. The Delphi Fire Department was called for extra manpower. Dispatchers say a tanker from the Rockfield Volunteer Fire Department was also assisting crews. Nobody was injured. For Central Catholic football fans, it was Blue Friday at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Sports Director Mike Clef joins us with more on the Knights and a very special <laughs> achievement. Well, Brittany, uh, the Knights could become the first Class 1A football team to win four consecutive state championships. But for that to happen, Central Catholic would have to beat the team that they defeated in last year's Class 1A state title game, the Crusaders of Indianapolis Cecina. The story of this game will be the Knights' defense and special teams. Knights punter Andrew Hubert, who's been awesome during the postseason, placed three kicks inside the Crusaders' 20-yard line, including this boot that was downed at the one. After a scoreless first half, Central Catholic scored a pair of touchdowns, one on a 54-yard TD pass from Ty Preston to shoeless Joe Smith. And that's because he scored this touchdown without one of his shoes. And they also scored on a 44-yard punt return uh, by Timmy Mills. The Knights' defense pitched a shutout and held their opponent without a touchdown for the second week in a row. Central Catholic wins their fourth straight state title. The final score, 14 to nothing. And for the Knights, their record during their spectacular four-season run is 59-1. and Wow. <laughs> yeah, Mike, the team had plenty to celebrate tonight, and its fans were happy to help as a caravan escorted the Knights back to Lafayette. The players, coaches, and fans got back into town around 845, and they, wel they were welcomed by a banner reading, Knights Take State for Pete. The names of the players and cheerleaders covered the sign. The CC bus was followed by a procession of fans, parents, and Lafayette police. Of course, we'll have much more on the game, including reaction from the Knights later on in sports. As the Knights celebrate a state championship, the Boilermakers prepare for one of their biggest games of the year. Purdue will kick off against IU tomorrow at noon, but it won't be a packed house at ross -Aid Stadium. Associate Athletics Director Tom Schott says about 42,000 tickets have been sold out of more than 62,000 available. Tomorrow's game will be the Boilermakers' final home game and their final game of the regular season. We'll have more on that game coming up in sports. Chad, what's the weather looking like out there for those fans heading to that big game tomorrow at Ross Aid? Well, at least there's going to be sun tomorrow, Brittany, but the thing is, temperatures will be low. I mean, it's going to be in the 30s all day tomorrow, and with a brisk wind 10 to 20 miles an hour, there will be an edge to that air. Notice the clouds right now, though, slowly eroding away. It's going to take a lot of time, though, and even during the day tomorrow, especially in our northeastern counties, there'll still be at least some cloudiness. But, boy, it's 27 at the station, but where the skies have cleared, it's a cold 22 at Fowler, 25 at Attica, and a 28 at the Cass County Airport there in Logansport. Now, 22 in the morning. The low, 33 at noon and 37 with that brisk wind at 4 p.m. Again, a few clouds around, more clouds as you drive northeastward, though. So not bad football weather, but still a little bit chilly, Brittany. Alrighty, thank you, Chad. Remember when Black Friday doorbusters used to start at 5 a.m.? Well, now many places like the Tippecanoe Mall have started opening as early as midnight. News 18's Elizabeth Rentschler was at the mall all morning as shoppers scurried from store to store. But as it turns out, with lines forming as early as 10 o'clock Thursday night, shoppers were in need of more than just good deals. They flock to the mall at all hours. I'm about 5 o'clock. 7. Midnight. Oh, no, 10 o'clock. 
I've been outside since 11.30 p.m. All looking for the item at the top of their wish list while saving some big time cash. I got my big griddle. That was, they were eight bucks. I mean, I couldn't resist. An, an Under Armour sweatshirt. A retro for Jordan, black, red, and grays. Anything and everything. And while many had bargains on their mind, they also couldn't forget their fuel for the day. <laughs> Joe Hufford is the owner of JL Hufford Coffee and Tea and says he has been open on every Black Friday for the last 22 years. But this year, he says the crowds were like nothing he's ever seen before. When we were supposed to open at 11, we had people banging on our door at 10.30 wanting a caffeine fix. And so we opened up a little bit early, probably could have opened up even earlier. Hufford says as of 7 o'clock Friday morning, they sold more than 1,000 cups of coffee. That's almost double what they sell in a normal day. On an average day, we're probably doing maybe three, four hundred, something like that. We've been here since, uh, like I say, 1030 last night, so it's still going strong. Strong like the drinks. The most popular this Black Friday? Anything with espresso or adding espresso to anything that doesn't have it. <laughs> All to make sure they could stay awake. I'd be asleep right now. If it, if it weren't for coffee. And take advantage of the shopping extravaganza. Happy holidays. Elizabeth Rentschler, News 18. Black Friday isn't just a day when shoppers head to the mall for the good deals. It's the first day when kids line up with their wish list to see jolly old St. Nick. News 18 video journalist David DeLong was at the mall today and talked with Santa Claus during his busiest time of the year. Ho, ho. Oh. <laughs> Actually, the whole holiday season starts from the day after Christmas for us in the elves, and we start preparing toys. And um, that's how we determine the elves actually do a lot of the determining on how many toys we're going to make on, on what the children like. What would you like for Christmas? So the girls, of course, really like their dolls. And uh, some of the new uh, dolls are all American dolls this year. And of course, Dora, little princess dolls. And of course, the favorite Barbies. What else would you like? The boys, of course, your cars and trucks, younger, younger uh, children, boys like your trains, and of course, the Nerf guns, any kind of video games. Santa can't be at every place all the time during the year, but he has all these helpers. Santa has over 800,000 helpers, and these helpers give feedback back to Santa about how people are, the children are acting. And uh, it goes from day to day a lot. Right. And David, the uh, helpers are giving me reports on you also. Yeah, and how, what are they saying about me? Well, I'd rather not. You're still right <laughs> in between. One more thing. Could you leave me something to eat on Christmas Eve? Mm -hmm. What would you leave me? Cookies and milk. Would you do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't eat all the cookies. Now that the craziness of Black Friday is coming to an end, small businesses are gearing up for their big day. Tomorrow is Small Business Saturday. The holiday was started by American Express to promote local small businesses. Business owners in the area are gearing up, hoping shoppers and customers will come out to support them. Owner of Red Poppy Studios and Gallery, Joanna Rutherford, says she doesn't know what to expect for tomorrow. She says this will be her first Small Business Saturday as a business owner. I don't know what to expect for traffic, but I'm hoping that the mall shoppers will be shopped out and look for a more local place to hang out. Rutherford encourages people to get out and shop at small businesses, not only in downtown Lafayette, but all over the area as well. Red Poppy will be open from 9.30 to 5. The gallery will be open along with the, hot, or the tea house. Shopping malls and toy stores aren't the only ones staying busy this week. It's the busy season for plumbers, too. Local plumber Jimmy Pitts of Homer Williams Plumbing says due to the high volume of family members and homes during the holidays, many people run into plumbing issues. He says the most common issue is a clogged drain from pouring cooking materials in the sink. The biggest culprit? Grease. Pitt says besides clogged drains and overfilled septic tanks, another big issue arises every year from excessive use. Also, water heaters. Water heaters don't take a break from the holidays, and uh, our main main thing is uh, changing them out when they need them. Pitt says, as a reminder, be mindful of what you put down your drains and always keep a check on the condition of your plumbing. 
From school to extra activities to spending time with friends and family, a teenager's life is often very busy, but some are finding time to give back. After the break, meet one high school freshman who was named Youth Volunteer of the Year. This portion of News 18 is brought to you by Williamson Eye Institute. It's Nissan season to save. Get up to 3,000 holiday bonus cash on top of existing offers on popular models. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Hurry, holiday bonus cash ends November 30. See the Samsung Galaxy S3 at Cellular Express and save 30%. That's over $60 from other retail stores. And we will include a free car charger. The Galaxy S3 has a large 4.8 inch Super AMOLED True HD display with an 8 megapixel camera and expandable memory up to 64 gigabytes. We'll help you transfer your media library and contacts into your Galaxy S3 phone. And we will show you how to use voice guided navigation with Google Maps. This offer is only available at Cellular Express. What's new at the Mike Racer Pre-Owned Center? Everything. That's right. With our combined Mike Racer Pre-Owned location, this huge superstore can't be beat. More than 300 gently pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs cover our expanded lot. Just take a look at the spectacular showroom. From sales to service, and even a free Wi-Fi cafe, we are your one-stop shopping experience. Remember, Nobody pays more for your trade-in than Mike Racer. Welcome to Toyotathon, biggest sales event of the year. I'm Jan. I hear now's a great time to get a truck. Well, it is. We have two very rugged and dependable trucks. Oh, well, I need one that can handle my boat. The Tundra towed the shuttle Endeavor weighing about 300,000 pounds. What's your boat weigh? It's, it's, let's, let's. Right now, get an amazing 0% APR for 60 months on seven of your favorite Toyota models, including the reliable and dependable 2013 Tundra. Toyota Thought is on, the event you don't want to miss. Ho, 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 that's pretty ho, hum. Get lots of unexpected gifts, up to 60% less every day at Gordman's. Discover incredible savings on a huge selection of apparel, home decor, and much more. Gordman's GT. Batteries Plus makes it easy to find the batteries you need for all your gifts, even though we know the very best presents don't require batteries. Batteries Plus, the replace it place. Visit Batteries Plus in Lafayette, north of the Topeka New Mall. Any battery, any bulb, for anything. It's Nissan season to save. Get up to 3,000 holiday bonus cash on top of existing offers on popular models. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Hurry, holiday bonus cash ends November 30th. Watching News 18 at 11. News from where you live. A long time headache for, drive, for area drivers may soon be over. Traffic was backed up in both directions from the stoplight at the Duncan Road and Sagamore Parkway intersection. News 18 did the math. It has taken drivers five to nine times longer to exit West Lafayette and reach Duncan Road than when there was no backup. NDOT spokeswoman Debbie Calder says crews plan on having both sides of Sagamore Parkway back open the first week of December. Drivers in the area are excited to hear that news. Definitely. <laughs> it's a real pain in the, the butt sometimes. <laughs> Especially when you're in a hurry. Yeah. But when, you're, when you're going to a job site, I've been stuck in that traffic for a half an hour before. I mean... Yeah. It's definitely bad. So taking Sagamore Parkway for Thanksgiving travel may have slowed you down this week, but things are looking to be much smoother in the area just in time for Christmas travel. Whether it's through school programs or in their own special way, some local teens are giving back to their community. One local teen has even been named the Youth Volunteer of the Year. News 18's Holly Campbell brings us the final installment of the State of the Youth, Teens Doing Good in the Community. Because of what I've gone through, um, I don't want other people to experience the same things that I've done have. So um, I just I like to give back to others. McCutcheon High School freshman Faith Killian Fosnut says, out of her dark past, she's working toward a future where she can make a difference in others' lives. Before she was adopted, Faith says she lived in an abusive household. Her past is what inspired one of her five programs, Writings on the Wall. The program helps teens write about topics they don't feel like they can talk to adults about. Which helps with youths that are going through abuse, teen pregnancy, um, alcoholic stuff, um, 
abusive relationships, anything that we feel like um, we can't talk to adults about because like maybe they might not understand or um, think, hey, this can't possibly be going on. Faith has earned the title Youth Volunteer of the Year for her work in the community. Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Deputy Sergeant Andy Cree says he's seen how community involvement can change a teen's life. A lot of times some of these kids start out maybe with a compromised family structure, or maybe not mom or dad, both in the same home. And if they can get involved with the community and have other role models and other people that model good behavior and they can feel a sense of worth. Cree says there are many local businesses that are willing to help minors that have had past run-ins with the law. He says he has seen how the opportunity to give back to the community has helped teens with their self-esteem and guide them down the right path toward community involvement. You don't have to be in trouble to be a good community service volunteer. The one thing I suggest to kids is first of all be active in their own neighborhoods. Some of these kids are disconnected from their own neighbors and if there's people in your own area you can help. If it's somebody with uh, who's maybe elderly that you can help with yard work, whatever it is, connect with your neighborhood first but then there's a lot of opportunities outside of that. One of those opportunities is through the Sheriff's Department. We do take teenage kids um, that want to volunteer their time and how they can affect the community. The Explore program not only teaches them things about law enforcement, but they've helped out with like the Red Cross Fish Fry where they are working to help uh, generate those donations that come in. While many teens may want to serve their community, Faith says she always reminds them to just ask what they can do. Hey, nothing's never impossible and just maybe talk to somebody and get the message out there that, hey, you want to help and see who will help you do it. Holly Campbell, News 18. And now, your Precision 18 forecast. News 18, weather from where you live. Well, boy, if you're on the south side of the ross Stadium tomorrow at the game, uh, where it's shaded for most of the day, it's going to be cold. But, boy, if you're in that sun, it will feel a lot better. A lot of sunshine, some cloudiness. Now, more clouds as you drive northeast right up towards, let's say, Logansport and Rochester. Pretty brisk wind out of the west and the northwest and a high of only 37 degrees. And even at noon at game time, 33. Cold, cold oaken bucket game tomorrow. But even though it's going to be cold tomorrow, it will warm up a little bit on Sunday. And we've got some showers on the way. Uh, later on Monday and on into Tuesday that may end as a few flurries around here. Here comes the cold air though, diving in from the northwest. This is the flow pattern that's going to get established on our area. And I think again, late November and early December, temperatures running below normal. This is where the warm air is. This is a ridge. See how the clouds are moving up and around. This is where the warm air is. Whereas they're moving down like this, that's where the cooler air is. Get used to that weather pattern. That's hanging on here. For a little while. On future casts, though, uh, once we get into tomorrow morning, there'll still be some cloudiness around, most likely still here in our northeast counties where there may be a snow flurry or two up towards Rochester, Peru, perhaps Royal Center. And by 3 p.m., notice uh, the best potential of a little more widespread cloudiness in our northeast, just some scattered clouds perhaps elsewhere. Now, once we get into tomorrow night and Sunday, just some high and uh, perhaps mid-level clouds here and there, but it will warm up. We'll actually have a southwest wind on Sunday, so we're talking about temperatures warming up well into the 40s. But tonight, though, 22 Lafayette, 20 Attica, 22 Romney, and where there'll be a little more cloudiness, a little warmer at Rochester with 25, 24 at Logansport, and the old uh, Oaken Bucket game for tomorrow, Purdue and IU, 37 Lafayette, Romney for the high, only 35 at Frankfurt, 34 Burlington, 36 at Monticello. But we're going to end the weekend on a slightly better note. Low 40s Rochester to perhaps even some upper 40s, Attica Pine Village on Sunday, 47 Lafayette, 46 at Colfax and Frankfurt. Next storm system, late Monday into Tuesday, some showers around, some snow off to the north. And as this kind of pulls away, we may end this as perhaps a few snow flurries. I would say once we get into later Tuesday and then the cold air really starts to move in. In fact, again, as we end November and go into early December, temperature is quite a bit below normal. But as you move westward, temps above normal and that pattern may hang on for at least perhaps the first couple of weeks of December. The average high is about 44. Highs only at 37 tomorrow, but 47 Sunday, Monday, 45 early Tuesday, and then kind of falling off, and any showers may end as a few snow flurries. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, highs only in the 30s, though, and perhaps a few rain and snow showers on 
Friday. So no 60s in that forecast after one of the warmest Thanksgiving on record nationwide. And our 63 yesterday, um, yeah, the best we can do is 47. I know, it's definitely t the, quite the turnaround today. It is, big big change. <laughs> Very yeah. chilly. Hey, I got to say, good to have you here pounded. You're doing <laughs> great. <laughs> yes, she is. Thank you, thank you. And, and I'll tell you what, we got to pound it to Central Catholic football. Yes. Just hold up the four fingers, four P <laughs> for the Knights. We'll head back to Lucas Oil Stadium. Plenty of highlights and post game from the state champion Knights. Back to back to back to back. Next to sports. The Friday Night Frenzy on News 18 is brought to you by Franciscan St. Elizabeth Health, DeFau Chevrolet BMW, Lafayette Savings Bank, St. Joseph's College, and Lafayette Orthopedic Clinic. Borrowing. It's just one of those things that a great neighbor is there for. And as your needs change, they'll oblige. That's the whole idea behind what we do at Lafayette Savings Bank. We're your neighbors, and we understand that sometimes you need to borrow from us. We're happy to help in any way we can. We're your hometown bank making hometown decisions and happily providing you with home mortgage loans. We know this place. We know you. Equal housing lender. No matter where you play. Pass it on. No matter what you play. Pass it on. Lafayette Orthopedic Clinic is your home team for sports injuries. So pass it on. We've been getting athletes of every age back in the game for over 50 years. Lafayette Orthopedic Clinic, the area's premier orthopedic and sports medicine center. It's the season to drive, so fuel economy is more important than ever. And Bill DeVal Chevrolet will save you both money and fuel. Drive the all-new DeVal Malibu and get plenty of gift hauling room and up to 37 miles per gallon for just $1.99 per month. Or travel economically with your new best-in-class DeVal Cruise. You'll get up to 42 miles per gallon for as low as $1.79 per month. Just see Bill DeVal for details. This year, make driving time saving time. Chevy runs deep at Bill DeVal Chevrolet, a brand you can trust, a name you can depend on. When I choose a hospital for my patients, I want a tradition of compassion. The Franciscan St. Elizabeth Central staff values the gift of life, motivated by humanity and driven by community. These are professionals who reaffirm my faith that my patients are in the best hands and who know giving people comfort is as important as getting them home. I'm Dr. Casey Pickerel, and when my patients need hospital care, I can count on Franciscan St. Elizabeth Central. For students to learn, they must live it. Dr. Neil Haskell, forensic entomology pioneer and professor at St. Joseph's College. To be a competent forensic scientist, you must be a scientist first. This competence involves uh, laboratory research, field work, and it involves case studies. Whether you're a well-known forensic entomologist working on a case or a student who wants to gain experience and knowledge in the field, this is Forensics in Action. I'm Dr. Neil Haskell, a pioneer in a new field of science, and you can find this science at St. Joseph's College. And now, sports scores and highlights. News 18, sports from where you live. Central Catholic football tried to make Indiana high school football history Friday by becoming the first football program to win four straight Class A state football titles. For that to happen, the Knights would have to dispose of Indianapolis Cecina, the team that the Knights downed in last year's Class A state title game. Let's head to Lucas Oil Stadium, Indianapolis, to show you how head coach Kevin O'Shea and the Knights fared today. Ross Corcoran leading CC out into the field. The punt by Central Catholic's Andrew Huberts. Hubie was big in the punting game today in all postseason. This one rolls all the way down to the one. Will Jones sells out to make the play. Will Jones made a lot of things happen in this game. Great field position. Late second quarter, Crusaders threatening. Big stop by the Central Catholic defense. After, we'll show you that, but that's Will Jones with the interception and the nice return, and the Knights get great field position. Now, we mentioned more great defense. This is right here. Grant Vogt with the stop on third down keeping Cecina from a field goal. Scores the half that changes in the third quarter as quarterback Ty Preston, the little swing pass to Joe Smith. Smith lost his shoe on the play. Didn't matter. Shoeless Joe, 54 yards touchdown. By the way, former Knight, current Boilermaker Danny Anthrop said, Knight's going to win this game 14-0, his prediction. It was 7-0 when this punt goes to Timmy Mills. His brother Jimmy Mills would be the Mental Attitude Award winner. It would be Timmy Mills, they're related, of course. Who would run this and run this and run this and run this? And that's a touchdown. That makes the score 14-0.
Will Jones, he's nicknamed the Energizer Bunny. This is good reason. What a backflip. And what a prediction by Dan Anthrop. 14 0 Knights win, fourth consecutive Class A state championship. Sports 18's Ross Mullen spoke to the state champion Knights after the game. For the fourth straight season, the Central Catholic Knights are state champions. And one thing is for sure the feeling of finishing the year number one never gets old. It's the greatest feeling ever. We've, we've been working since fourth grade for this. I mean, this is what we all wanted, and we finally reached it. Uh, these guys are my brothers. I love them more than anything. I mean, we're going to stay friends forever. You, I mean, you don't go through all this and just forget about it. We're, we're brothers for forever. It's awesome. You know, freshman year, who would have ever thought we could have done this? And I'm just so glad that everyone stuck together and throughout all four years, all the cards fell out way, and we got four of them. The four P. Uh, it's been a great experience, and at my trophy case at home, I've got one spot missing, and this is where that medal's going, and it's just gonna complete my trophy case. It's it's an amazing feeling. It was a game that was tied 0-0 at the half until Joe Smith broke this one wide open with a 54-yard touchdown catch, and he did it with one shoe. Uh, it's just a simple crossing route about five yards deep and I just came across the side and Ty saw me and I was wide open so he just dished it off to me. It was a bit weird. I felt like I was going to fall over because I kept sliding every time I'd come down on my right foot. I had made fun of him today in his new shoes and uh, I'm glad I did because uh, he, he turned in a big play. Ty barely got the ball off in time but it was an accurate throw and uh, Joe took it up the sidelines, did the rest I guess with one shoe. Right now I'm, I'm very, very happy for our seniors. Um, uh, you know, it's something that they had a goal as, and, and it's fun to help them realize that goal. Head coach Kevin O'Shea and the Knights will celebrate this one for a long time, as they are the only team in Class A to win four years in a row. Next year brings a new challenge for LCC, as the Knights will take their football program to 2A. Reporting at Lucas Oil Stadium, Ross Bullen, Sports 18. Thank you very much, Ross. Meanwhile, Purdue football will try to become bowl eligible for the second year in a row and at the same time retain possession of the old oaken bucket when the Boilermakers host Indiana tomorrow at noon at Ross 8 Stadium. There has been a significant amount of speculation regarding the job status of Boilers head coach Danny Hope, who is under contract through 2016, but has said in recent weeks he's not concerned about losing his job. While Purdue Athletic Director Morgan Burke has not commented publicly on Hope since issuing a statement a little over three weeks ago, saying that the attention should be on the remainder of the Boilermakers regular season. As for Coach Hope, his focus is on keeping the bucket on the Purdue campus. It's a great game, uh, certainly a, a, the, the most exciting game on our schedule on an annual basis, one of the, the greatest sporting events in the state of Indiana. Anytime that you can uh, beat an in-state opponent, I think that's always great, uh, great sign for your program. So you know, a big game, a lot of reasons you want to win, but just being a bowler maker is, is why you want to win this ball game. All right, senior night for Purdue volleyball players Ariel Turner, Anna Drury, Amanda Miller, and Courtney Goswich. The Bordermakers hosting Wisconsin. Speaking of Turner, that is the kill by the reigning Big Ten Player of the Year. Bordermakers win game one. And then Turner this time playing terrific defense. She gets the block, and that is another point for the home team. We move to game two and a very promising sophomore, Val Nickel. She'll get the put away for the Bordermakers. Purdue wins in four games, 25-14, 24-26, 25-14. 25-22, Coach Shondell and the Boilers finished the regular season 12-8 and in the Big Ten, overall 21-10. and 12th ranked Purdue women's basketball now 5-0 and this season after defeating Wake Forest tonight at the Paradise Jam in the Virgin Islands. Sam Ostarello, 15 points, 15 rebounds. Chantel Post and Courtney Moses scored 11 points each. And uh, Brittany, basketball tonight, boys basketball, Tri-County and Twin Lakes won. Once again, congrats to Central Catholic football. Alrighty, thank you, Mike. Welcome. Chad will have a final look at the weather when we return. At Inpatient Physical Rehab at Franciscan St. Elizabeth Central, you can count on us for encouragement to move forward. We push you to work hard, but that's because the things that matter to you matter to us. And our mission only ends when you're back to the life you love. It takes time, you'll be tired, but with patience and perseverance, we're gonna get there. I'm Trent Riley of Physical Therapy at Franciscan St. Elizabeth Central, and you can count on me.
Freckles Graphics. If you can think it, we can create it. Black Friday, the day people wait for all year in search of a great deal. But now, during the Ford year-end celebration, Black Friday lasts until the end of the month. Buy or lease a new Ford and you'll get a great deal, great mileage, and the latest technology. Why wait for the holidays? It's Black Friday right now at your Ford dealer, and that's something to celebrate. Hurry in for Black Friday savings to get an escape with up to $2,000 cash back. Or lease one for only $2.29 a month. H.H. H. Gregg lights up Black Friday weekend. Now through Saturday, up to 40% off TVs, appliances, and more. Plus, up to 24 months, no interest. Android tablets, only $49. Samsung 43-inch HD TVs, $379. Mitsubishi 73-inch TVs, $799. Maytag washer dryers, $399 each. Samsung French door refrigerators, save $1,200. Now through Saturday, H.H. H. Gregg. Ah. <sighs> The hot morning shower. Just the thing to start your day. Wow. Or is your water not so hot? So call Water Heater Express. Water Heater Express? 447 1965. 24 7 service. Howdy, ma'am. Cold water. Wow, that was fast. Cold water? Call us. We'll warm you up. 447 1965. It's that easy. You're watching News 18 at 11. News from where you live. Chad, now that Thanksgiving is over, it's time to look ahead to Christmas. Yeah. So how's the weather going to be like that out there for people who want to get those Christmas decorations uh, up? Good idea. You know, the cold weather is going to make it feel like it's getting closer to Christmas. 63 doesn't help very much. That's what we had yesterday. But boy, the 30s tomorrow, it's going to feel like it's December. 22 in the morning. Few clouds and a pretty brisk west wind. 12 miles an hour, pretty steady. Gusts up to 20 in the afternoon. It gets a little bit better once we get into Sunday. 47, 47 Monday, some showers possible late, and showers ending Tuesday may end as a few flurries as we may start out at 45, you know, late morning, midday, then fall in the afternoon. And then after that, we've got 30s, 35 Wednesday, 37 Thursday. Okay, well, great. It's getting a little little chillier as we go on. It sure is. Okay. Yep. Well, join the weekend crew tomorrow for your latest local news and weather. Until then, find us online at WLFI.com, on Twitter, and Facebook. The Light Show's next. Thanks for watching. We will see you again tomorrow. Have a great night.